In this video, due to popular demand, I am going to give you an overview of the 100 watt radio that I have installed in my Jeep. A mobile radio that when brand new had a price tag of over $5,000. Now, if you are a long time viewer, you already know that when I'm not here sitting in the Not a Rubicon Institute studios, staring at the black dead eye of a camera, I am usually out off-roading in my Jeep. As a matter of fact, I started this YouTube channel making videos of my off-roading and Jeep adventures, but nobody liked to watch those videos, so now I talk about radios instead. So because I go off-roading so often, and because when I do go off-roading, I am usually the one at the front of the group leading the rest of the off-roaders with me, having a high-power, reliable radio is very important to me. Now, before I go any further, I must inform you that even though I did pay for the radio that's in my Jeep at full price with my own monies, since I made that purchase, I have formed a relationship with the company that I bought that radio from, and that company is Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon. And since then, they have sent me radios at no cost so that I could show them to you right here on my YouTube's channel. And this is the star of this video, my Motorola XTL 5000. It comes with a very loud speaker that as you can see, I have mounted right there. This speaker is so loud that if you turn up the volume all the way, you can hear it crystal clear from 200 yards away. It is that loud. It has this very heavy duty microphone and the radio is connected to my Midland MXTA 26 antenna affiliate link below. Using this radio installed in my Jeep with the Midland MXT 26A antenna, depending on the terrain, I am able to talk with other mobile radios 30 miles or more away, and I was able to hit one of my favorite repeaters from 93 miles away. This radio has many, many FARs. As you can now see through the magic of the Windows Movie Maker software, I have now torn the radio apart and brought it into the Not A Rubicon Institute studios so that you can get a more intimate look at all the parts. As you can see, it is very small and compact. The control head, the microphone, and the speaker do not take up very much room at all. But what you don't see is the giant 10 pound brick, which is where most of the radio actually lives and where all the magic happens. It is just over one foot long, approximately seven and a half inches wide, and just under three inches tall. And it does weigh about 10 pounds. This is just the screen and the control head where the microphone connects. The mounting bracket for the brick is very heavy duty steel. And by using this key, the mounting bracket unlocks and opens up. Allowing me to slide the radio in and out. In and out. The radio uses proprietary connectors and cables to connect the control head to the brick and both the control head and the brick need their own power source. The connectors are color coded to make connecting almost idiot proof, but not quite. And as you can see, there are multiple plugs for connecting to other control heads and accessories. The connectors will go in only one way, so you can't screw that up. The radio uses a mini UHF antenna connector. So in the Jeep, I'm using a mini UHF to PL259 adapter to connect to my Midland MXT26A antenna. Affiliate link below. So we have power to the brick that goes here, the control cable from the brick into the control head, another cable that has power for the control head, also goes into power, and the speaker connector here. 
and the microphone plugs in here. Now, because I got my radio from Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon, it has been fully refurbished. It has been tuned, aligned, and tested. And even though the radio itself is used, the speaker, the wiring, and the mounting brackets are all brand new. I don't have the mounting brackets here, but it comes with mounting brackets for the speaker and the control head. Now, it is very important to note that this is not a consumer-grade GMRS radio, although it is fully capable of transmitting on GMRS frequencies and using GMRS repeaters. It is not FCC approved for use on GMRS frequencies. This is a commercial radio, and our overlords at the FCCs have decreed that you must have an FCC business license, also known as an LMR license, to use this radio. If you don't know what that is, I could explain it, but I don't want to. So instead, I will put a link to a video that I made not very long ago explaining what an LMR license is and what it takes to get one. You can find that in the information section below. As previously mentioned, when brand new, this radio cost over $5,000. And these radios were used in virtually every cop car and fire truck in the United States from the early 2000s up until around 2015 or so. And even today, many smaller agencies still use these radios. Now, no doubt someone will leave a comment declaring that you can get these radios for two or $300. And that is true. You can find old broken down XTL 5000 radios on Craigslist or eBay with no warranty or guarantee whatsoever for just a few hundred dollars. Or you can purchase a fully refurbished XTL 5000 with an actual warranty from places like where I bought mine, Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon. The normal price for a refurbished XTL 5000 from Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon is $895. However, as of the moment that I am recording this video, it is currently discounted to only $745. And if you use the coupon code NOTARUBICON at checkout, you can get an additional $95 discount. And just a very quick disclaimer for all of the haters out there that love to say that I'm just a shill and a sellout. When you purchase this radio from Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon, I get nothing. Even if you use my links, I will put a link to this radio in the information section below or wherever it's at. Even if you use my link, even if you use my discount code for the $95 discount, the discount code, which is not a Rubicon, even if you use my code and my links, I get nothing because I do this for you. You have something in your, in your teeth. And please allow me to also take another very quick moment of your very valuable time to educate some of the dumbasses out there that have left comments on my previous videos regarding used and refurbished radios. This radio is no longer manufactured by Motorola. And that means that the supply of these radios is finite and limited. And the price is subject to change based on supply and demand. For all of the dumbasses watching, this means that the radio will not be on sale forever. The radios will not always be in stock. And it is not only possible, but it is very likely that the price will change. As you can see, I have all of the standard GMRS channels configured in one zone. A zone is like a group. And I can hit the zone up button to go to the next zone, which I have set up as repeaters, including the P25 digitally encrypted repeater that I use under the authority of an FCC LMR license. The next zone is repeater input frequencies so that I can monitor input frequencies of repeaters should I desire to do so. I have some emergency receive only frequencies programmed and I have some ham frequencies and repeaters that I listen to in this zone. The radio is also set up for private radio to radio encrypted communications. So for example, because I have one of these same radios in my wife's Jeep, we can talk to each other on our encrypted channel so that nobody knows that we're talking about them. And it can scan through all those frequencies that I have set up by just pressing the scan button. And all of these soft buttons here are programmable. 
So you can set them to do pretty much whatever you want them to do. And with the programming software, you can also change the color of the screen. I have mine set to orange to match the beautiful orange of my Jeep. And you can do about a bazillion other things using the software. As previously mentioned, this is not a consumer GMRS radio. This is a commercial radio that does way, way more than any consumer GMRS radio could ever hope to achieve. This radio was designed for businesses and government type agencies, so it can do all the things that most agencies would ever need. It does P25 digital trunking, encryption, MDC, dispatch control, paging, messaging, but it also does the plain old analog simplex, and it can connect to repeaters, use split tones, and all those other things that the regular consumer radios can do. Basically, this radio is the physical embodiment of a radio dork's wildest wet dream. The Motorola XTL 5000 is a super heterodyne type receiver, and it has much better specs than any consumer grade GMRS radio you can buy. This means that it is far more sensitive and it can filter out more unwanted noise and static, and it transmits a much more pure signal than any consumer grade radio. And of course, the big draw to this radio is that it is rated at up to 100 watts. However, the actual power output will depend on what frequency you are transmitting on and how well the amplifiers inside have held up over the years. Remember, these things are five to 15 years old, so most will probably only output a maximum of 80 or 90 watts. I usually get about 91 watts out of this one. If you purchase a Motorola XTL 5000 from where I purchased mine, Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon, they can do some pre-programming for you. But if you want to make any changes to the radio after you receive it, you will need the Motorola programming software, which is not an easy to use consumer radio type program. You will need to spend some time learning to use this software because it is very, very deep. And due to the overly strict Motorola software licensing, you will need to find the software yourself via the interweb or from your local Radio Dork Club. You will also need a programming cable, which costs about $40 on Amazon. The programming cable connects to the microphone hole and the other end goes into one of the holes on your computer. I told you this would be a short and quick video and as always, I keep my promises. So in summary, the Motorola XTL 5000 that I purchased for me to use in my Jeep does everything that I need it to do. And for those that do not agree that it is a great radio, I don't give a shit.